My my dad was in the uh, in the navy, and um, during that time, he must have learned quite a lot of monologues, because when he came out of the navy, he used to go around at various places, uh, giving these monologues, and I got I got quite used to him doing them because of the fact that uh, he used to let me carry his case, his little case, with all of his monologues in. And so that's how I, I got to know him. And uh, while I was in the Royal Marines, at the end of our training, we used to have what they call a squad concert. And I thought to myself, I'd like to be able to do one of those monologues like my dad. So I sent a letter to my dad and asked him to, to send on one of his monologues that uh, I could learn uh, that I could do in the squad concert. And uh, so I eventually got this monologue and uh, um, it took me a, a week or two to learn it in between my Royal Marine training. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, w I was quite ple pleased with my uh, my first effort uh, because I, I felt rather nervous. There was all the officers sitting in the front row, all all the important ones, you know. <laughs> and uh, so from then on, I got more confident in learning the monologues. And uh, up there, well, as a matter of fact, I'd like to give you this first monologue that I, I learned, which my dad sent me, and I can honestly say this is my first monologue. Perhaps you've heard about Carthage Cops Derby. Well, I trained that horse for the race, for I've trained over 10,000 winners and five thousand more for a place. For Coffee Cup looked like the Shetland, her tiny black mane shone like silk. In fact, her mouth was so small that to feed her, we had to condense all the milk. So we stabled her out in the greenhouse in the hope that she'd grow under glass. But Coffee Cup never got bigger she still remained just Demitas. The first big event that she ran in, I felt scared to death, I must own, for she raced for a bride and a fortune to win me the derby and Joan. The bookmakers all tried to dope her, for they knew that the horse couldn't fail. They tried to make glue in their porridge and they tried to put salt on her tail. But the bookmakers all tried to dope her, for they knew that the horse couldn't fail. They tried to put glue in their porridge, and put, tried to put salt on her tail. But on the way to the race, I got anxious, for I'd heard of the crooks in town, so I took coffee cup in the taxi in case she got pinched going down. But we got to the race course in safety, but Hawkins, the jockey, then struck. He objected to ride on a Friday, in case it would bring him bad luck. So we rang up the labour exchanges, and they all got mixed on the phone, and they sent round the heavyweight boxer a giant of 34 stone. There wasn't time now to replace him, so off he was sent on the course, but the crowd gave a yell when they saw him. He was three times the size of the horse. As soon as he sat in the saddle, poor Coffee Cup started to cough, <laughs> and he just got his knees in the stirrups. When the flake fell, Hurrah! They were off! The first quarter mile was a whirlwind, 
but gamely away there she egged. But I knew that the weight must be telling, for the horse was becoming bow-legged. But the others were gaining upon her when she gave a, gave a low pitiful whine. I could see that the poor horse had hiccups, as well as a kink in the spine. I knew no, she'd not stay the distance, for she seemed to have cramp in the legs. Then she staggered, she fell, she lay helpless. Poor coffee's got drained to the dregs. But up jumped that stout-hearted jockey, though I had given up the ghost, for he stooped and he picked up that horse in his arms, and he ran with the first past the post. Bum, bum. <laughs>